So we're going to have a look at some of the equipment. And the first area we'll look at here is understanding fins. So it's not just what fins to buy, it's, it's you need to have a bit of an understanding of what you're getting into. Most people will start on a plastic fin. Now, first of all, why is it long? It's all a matter of how much water you can push with it. Now, uh, just to get a bit of an understanding before we get into the, uh, the uh, details, the the whole thing about fins uh, is for 90, probably 9% of your diving, it's about economy. Being able to hold your breath longer means not using all your oxygen up. You've got to, every now and then, maybe once every two years or something like that, you find yourself trying to hold a fish from hitting the, the reef, you know. You haven't spared it really uh, effectively, you know, you haven't completely disabled it, and it's going for the reef, whether it's a kingfish which are known for that or a dog tooth tuna or something it's going hard for the reef and you're having to hold it off you do need to have a bit of power there in that situation however if you work on fins that you've got to have power as your major one you'll be missing the benefits that you can get with uh, modern fins because modern fins are all about economy of oxygen if you want to go down to the bottom and lie on the bottom in 20 or 25 minutes or whatever is your goal and stay there for long enough for the fish to forget about the fact that you were this scary big blob coming down from the surface and now all of a sudden you're there's this thing over there which they've forgotten about and it's raising a little bit of sand it might be feeding and they go oh maybe some worms or something I can get over they will come over and have a look at you and this gives you the chance to get some fish for dinner so I'll come over and have a look and you get a chance to spare them and we're talking a lot of species work exactly that way and of course there's the other reason you need to be have plenty of uh, oxygen while you're down there and you don't blow it all coming down and that is that uh, you might have to reposition yourself you know there's a cave you go through a cave or there's a corner you go around the reef and there's a perfect ambush there but you need 40 seconds to get in position you need another 10 or 15 seconds to, for, to wait for the fish so this is the kind of thing you're looking at if you've got down to the bottom and you've got time to spend down there now you can get the fish okay Think of that, the basics, then we'll have a look at the fins and how this comes about. So we started off some years ago, we had rubber fins. And then, you know, 30 years ago, something like that, uh, we got plastic. And plastic was superior because it has an element of stiffness and, uh, and it also has a, a relatively good flick compared to the, the sort of floppiness of a rubber fin. Okay, and so that's where we went, and that's where uh, the beginnings of these uh, nice long fins sort of came from. Um, but it wasn't long when, until people started working out that there were better materials. Okay, and then we move into fiberglass. This is an example of a good fiberglass fin. The, um, the thing about fiberglass is you've jumped up from plastic you know, maybe up to as much as 40%. Now this is just a figure out of my mind. I no one's done any measuring on it. The effectiveness of plastic compared to, compared to fiberglass, you know, they haven't done these tests and you know, what fiberglass fin and what plastic fin, they all vary so much, it would be impossible to test them. But at a guess, 40% from plastic through to fiberglass, okay. And uh, lovely material, it's a strong material. You can hit it pretty hard in many different ways. You bend plastic fins too hard, you're gonna create stress fractures. You work off the bottom like these, like so, you know, off the bottom. There's gonna be stress fractures and within a matter of even months after doing that a few times, the fin is not gonna have the same amount of kick as it did have. Fiberglass fins, they don't develop them so easy. You have to be really hard on them. So fiberglass fins made to be bulletproof. So the next thing that came along after fiberglass, carbon fiber. And carbon fiber is just a different material again, but it's not like a 40% gain. It's probably about a 10 to 15% better than your fiberglass. You know, and a good fiberglass fin and a bad carbon fin, they're gonna be a bit similar. However, good carbon fiber fins are 
just great for being eco economic on oxygen. And we've done the pool testing, you know, we've, you know, we've gone back and forth, we've had people using different fins, we've videoed them and working out how, how to get them working right, the number of strokes, the number of times and how far a person can go. We've done the homework for you. So the carbon fiber fin is the superior fin, there's no doubt about it. But the hard thing about carbon fiber, and most, most people don't recognize this, is that what makes it work is its lightness and its ability to spring back. So here we go. That memory to go from here, snap back there, this is what we're depending on in a carbon fiber fin. Now my son Anthony Judge, who's a, uh, a leading freediver and a good spare fisher around Australia, he did some serious work on this and he was studying uh, carbon fibre fins and uh, their workings uh, for a, a, about two years and he was making his own carbon fibre fins on, on, and during that time and he worked out what it was about carbon fibre fins that really make them work. Now it's become sort of general knowledge, I often tell this story in the, in the Adreno shop here, but what it is, it's, uh, it's a little bit like a rule of the universe, you know, if you've got a whip and you just flop the whip out, it'll just go bleh. But if you flop the whip out and before that motion comes to its fruition, you pull it back. You introduce a second motion into that material and you create, in a whip, you create the end of the whip going faster than the speed of sound. And that's, your, that's where you get your crack. In a carbon fiber fin, and to a large degree, fiberglass fins, you've got the same deal. Okay, so you, we're not talking, and let's get past this. We, I know we're hearing some, even some freediving schools talking about the long, slow sweeps, you know, the oh, big sweep coming down and boom. And not only you're getting your fin sweeping, your leg, it's way up there, it's stopping water, stopping you going through, there's your streamlining, it goes right down the bottom there. Now it's stopping the water again with your leg, catching the water, destroying your streamlining. So this isn't how to use carbon fiber fins. The way you use carbon fiber fins is you're doing a small flutter kick, very similar to a swimmer's kick, where your foot may be only going up and down about, you know, six inches, old school, eight inches. Uh, but what it is is when the fin loads up into this position here and you introduce your next movement, there it is there. Now look what it's doing, look at the dynamics of this fin. Look what it's doing to the end there. What's gonna happen? It's gonna flag out. This is what Ant calls free energy that you develop by just having a good technique. It goes click, and then you're coming up again, and then you introduce the next one, and look at it, boom, there it is again. That same, uh, you know, flick. It's not quite the you know, speed of sound, <laughs> but that's what it is, that's great. And this is what you get from a good set of carbon fibre fins and even a good set of fibreglass fins is the ability to get that happening. Now, I've been working with these fins, selling them and, and uh, working them and training people in them for a number of years. And uh, you'll find there's a lot of people and look, this is hats off to them, this is how they do it, that if they don't feel like they're playing a game of football with their legs, or they feel like they're, you know, they're waving cigarette papers in the wind. You know the meaning of it. They don't feel the pressure, so they don't think they're going far. And even though we've done the tests in the pool and how far you can go and things like that, uh, for these guys, unless they're willing to adjust their finning cycle, they just need to have a medium fin, something a, a bit more solid that they can feel it bite. Okay. For a new guy, I suggest you progress as soon as you can to a nice soft fiberglass or carbon fiber fin. Because uh, in the long run, this is going to be, a, you know, you're going to a, a, become a better diver with the techniques that are involved in this. So now there's a couple of things on it in that, um, uh, look on fiberglass, the very thing that we love about the fiberglass is, that, is the fact that they're light and it's only a thin material, very thin, that will actually give the power that you'll get on something a bit thicker than that or you, you know, far more than what you'd ever get on these things here, you know. So uh, 
but that's one of the things you can have a problem with uh, carbon fiber. Now I don't say all of them, some of them are really rugged fins, the carbon fiber, but we've seen it happen in the pool where someone's been a safety diver and they've gone to rescue someone and they've jammed the fin down on the bottom and it's damaged the fin. Why? Because there's so little material there. Okay, and that little material produces such a, a, a lot of um, usable power that we like it, but we can't misuse them. If you whacked it into a reef or something like that, there's quite a lot of them that will not take it. And there's even makers that uh, if you use the fin in the pool and it breaks, carbon fiber fin in the pool and it breaks, they won't warrant it. Was it used in the pool? Yes, sorry, no warranty. See, so uh, the reason I tell you this is because we know the benefits of the carbon fiber fin, but we've just got to understand there are some limitations and it comes from the fact that uh, they're thin, they're very thin fins comparing to the others. Okay, so there we are, three, plastic, fiberglass, carbon fiber in ascending uh, order of uh, uh, workability. Okay, all right, so there's a couple other things to look at. Most of us like to use fins with socks. And the reason being is to, even in the plastic or whatever, the foot pocket to hold this much pressure and being able to utilize that much has to be a fairly solid rubber. And uh, unless you're sort of used to it, and there are plenty of divers that have got used to it, but uh, this, these air edges, edges here can rub your ankle, okay, and cause sea ulcers. We call them that's where you get a second rub on the first one and you've got to spend time out of the water and i'm sure there's more people spending time out of the water for blisters when they start from their fins than there are for any other reason you know so socks just to, we always work at a from a start from a, a two mil okay and that way you can go less or more depending on the size of the fin fins we have got about four or five sizes that has got to do everybody so what we do is we adjust the sizes for the feet with um, uh, with the socks. You know, with your two mil socks, you, it adjusts the size. And if you've got a bigger fin you, and, and your foot doesn't quite work in that one, you could add a three mil sock in or something like that. So that's the way we, we work with socks. Now, uh, a little bit of gravel in your foot pocket, a little bit of coral or something like that, and you don't have uh, socks on, you go, oh, I'll just swim back to the boat. By the time you get back to that boat, that uh, piece of coral can rip your foot up a fair bit. And, uh, you know, with coral as well, that can be a bit septic. So this is also a, a good point on um, uh, keeping you in the water, you know, not, uh, uh, not getting uh, cut up in the foot department. Okay, now there are various foot pockets we can use. These ones are C4s, they go in the C4 blades. Um, uh, different foot pockets have different qualities. With a carbon, you want a foot pocket that transfers the power, that uses the power of the blade, you know. Um, more than anything, a foot pocket has to be comfortable. It's no good if you go, I've got this excellent foot pocket and it feels terrible. You know, the whole thing about being in the water, you get into that zone where you're no longer worried about what's happening down here. You've got your attention, 100% of your attention on your environment. And that is what we're after. So you do that by getting rid of things that attract your attention. A badly fitting, uncomfortable foot pocket is not what you want. So uh, get a good one, get one that fits your feet. So try a few on. A great idea, and we do this in, in the uh, free diving club is that we get people to swap fins around. Sometimes find someone with your similar um, foot size and you start getting an understanding of what foot pocket fits your feet and what fin is a, a good one for your body size and your muscular uh, build. Okay, fins. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss a video. You can check out more content on our YouTube channel. Visit one of our stores and shop online at www.spearfishing.com.au.